Joining us now on the hot seat, Rowan William Short from Vunani. Thank you very much for joining us, Rowan. Thank you. I think let's also start off with when you see these kind of movements to the upside and to the downside, and it's aggression both ways, volatility, do you take a conservative stance or do you say, well, there's a lot of value to be found? Uh, the first thing is I don't agree with the assertion that I read about so often that markets have been particularly volatile recently. I, I think it's uh, nothing special. We had much more volatile markets in the past. Uh, the bond market, for exactly. example. Exactly. The CBOE index is only sitting at around 35 yeah, or yeah. so, and we were closer yeah. to 100 Quite in right. 2008. And, yeah, and the drawdowns we had even in 2008 were, were you know, child's play compared to some of the things we've seen in the last 150 years in, in other markets. So I don't think there's anything too special going on at the moment. I mean, it's, it's fun to talk about what's newsworthy. Um, but should you be conservative or aggressive? I think that, as always, depends on what you're trying to do for a particular client. I wouldn't be running for the hills out of equities. I think uh, we have fairly decent valuation on, on equities. I heard the previous speakers talking about um, the, the diversified miners. I think they look fairly attractive. Uh, what has been interesting is the, the fairly rampant bond market, uh, bull, bull market in bonds uh, the last little while, notwithstanding the greatest event of my career in the negative sense, the downgrading of the US. We've still had this extraordinary bull market in US government bonds followed in developed markets and, and in South Africa. So. Well, I mean, you're talking about bonds and, you know, U.S. Treasuries, mm. the 10-year the bond, mm. actually, we saw the yield dropping to below 2%. This is yeah. despite the fact that you're talking about this unprecedented move of the U.S. Uh, downgrade from yeah. a AAA country. What is your sense with regards to U.S. Treasuries versus the local bond scenario? And again, we're looking at yield. Is it really all about yield at this stage? It is largely from a foreign perspective. We've got it, uh, you know, us, us domestic investors might have a slightly different perspective, but it is 6% yield advantage on a South African tenure over a US tenure with a currency that Touchwood has been now stable for a long time and very strong over the past 10 years. Uh, South African bonds must look attractive. The downgrade in the US is, is interesting. Uh, um, it makes yet another mockery of the rating agencies who have performed diabolically for 15, 20 years. I mean, these are the geniuses who had Enron at AAA until the day it went bust. That have had Botswana rated higher than uh, Japan. They had ESCOM downrated until somebody pointed out the government owns ESCOM. So uh, place no store by, by their performance. But they've downgraded the US, which is uh, sort of <coughs> sublimely ridiculous because the US only borrows in its own currency. It cannot default. The government can default in debt when it owes in a different currency. So long as you control the printing machines, in your own currency and that's the only currency in which you have debt there's no problem so that's the u.s spoken for uh, i don't believe that us domestic managers should try to second guess where the u.s is so you've got the downgrade you've got a flood of new paper and yet rates are two percent in fact 191 yesterday at those rates domestic rates on our 10-year bonds of about 7.7 7, uh, certainly aren't a gift but they look about reasonable and probably a bit mm. more attractive to, to foreigners. Well, hopefully you're not comparing it to the Greek uh, yields, <laughs> which are sitting at close to 100%. So, Derek, yes. Uh, just to, to bring the conversation back home on a domestic front, and obviously looking at what the bonds have done, particularly over the last three weeks, uh, Rowan, can I get your stance on where you see the interest rate environment for the next uh, six months and even 12 months out? Or particularly, do you see uh, a further interest rate uh, cut or do we, are we in, in line to see interest rates stable and for how much longer? Yeah, I think uh, what has changed in the last little while is that the probability of a, of a cut by the Reserve Bank uh, is, is meaningful now. It was uh, off the table a, a few months ago. Also remember that uh, the Reserve Bank has made it clear that it's being a bit more pragmatic. It's not purely targeting inflation anymore. It is concerned with the economy, the way the, the US Central Bank is as well. If we were in a purely inflation targeting environment, then you would have to say there simply is not scope to cut rates. Uh, inflation, by all estimates, will pop through 6% mm -hmm. at some point later this year. When you're above your target, you just don't have scope to cut rates. But with unemployment being an issue, with the economy being sluggish and so on, I think we could get a cut. What interests me more, because you know whether money market rates are 525 or 5, what matters? The, um, the steepness of the yield curve, notwithstanding that long bond rates are low at historic low levels, this, the yield curve is still very, very steep. Mm. In fact, it's the third steepest it's been in the modern era of, of South African bonds, which does suggest, and I've tested this empirically over many years, uh, continued outperformance of bonds over cash. Yeah. 
Personally, I suspect equities will do better still. What about inflation-linked bonds? Because uh, the real uh, return that we mm. see with regards to bonds in South Africa, of course, you cannot compare to what we see in the developed mm. market. But here in South Africa, if we do see an interest rate cut, would inflation-linked bonds be the way to go? No, I don't think so. I, I think uh, that game has run its course. You know, if, when inflation-linked bonds were introduced into South Africa in the year 2000, with a government guarantee, you could get 7% real. I mean, we all should have packed our bags, sold our equity, sold our vanilla bonds and bought these things. Now the uh, inflation-linked bonds are yielding less than 2% real. As a fund manager looking at, you know, as if with my fiduciary duty to, to customers out there who need to make a living on their investment portfolios, I think it's just stunningly unambitious to sit and tuck away a total return of, un a real return of under 2%. I would certainly be aiming for better than that out of vanilla bonds and out of equities. So foreigners we know are very attracted to our bonds. Are locals attracted to our bonds? Are you attracted to the bond market, the South I, African I bond market? I don't think so. I think from a domestic point of view, I don't. Th there's better asset classes out there for domestic players in our market. So again, going back to the equities uh, perspective, you can go into the equity market in these extreme sell-offs when there's panic and concerns around the developed world and pick up stocks that yield you in excess of 5.5% with the potential of growth and capital upside from the levels that they sit at. So, you know, in terms of our bond market, I think it's for a very, very risk-averse player uh, looking for some income. But, you know, it's really predominantly been driven by the foreigners. And I think that as a local investor, there's a lot more value in terms of equities at this point. May I step in for one second? Yes, we have course. tacitly been talking government bonds, all three of us, up yeah. till now. There's still some excellent value in certain South African corporate bonds. I mean, there's bonds of issuers like First Rand, which are... Which are not going to go bankrupt before the maturity of these bonds that offer fantastic spreads. But after that, yeah, it, you know, when you can pick up dividend yields, approaching government bond yields on large cap stocks, uh, you should take those opportunities. The only reason people aren't is because there's, uh, in theory, this risk aversion out there in the world and so on. But. Um, Intestinal fortitude is, is the number one requirement for investing okay, and, and buy these things. Uh, out the bond performance, I mean, you've, you've obviously got a holding within the, the bond market. So just give us a sense in terms of the, uh, the returns that you've experienced relative to your benchmark. We've had a good run. Um, the funds that I ran um, at Vernani have just uh, gained their four-year track record. Uh, in that period, just on a simple basis, we're uh, a very few basis points away from outperforming the benchmark by 1,000 basis points over four years. Uh, that's about 1.86% per annum that we've, that we've managed to achieve uh, and also look very, very good against the competition. So it's been a great run on, on managing these funds actively by taking um, present interest rate views and by using corporate spreads that have been attractive and playing kinks in the yield curve and mm -hmm. various it other things. Sounds very technical, actually. Um, <laughs> it, I think it, that's it, it is. It, it, it can be technical, but um, it's not too tricky. Okay. <laughs> Last comments from you, Derek. Yeah, look, I think if we sit at this point in time, you know, we, we look at all the different asset classes. So, um, you know, you've got to look at it and say, where do you position yourself within the equity market? And as a portfolio manager, I'm of the opinion that the bulletins and the anglers look attractive yeah. and I'm still quite bullish on the resource base. Fantastic, gentlemen. We have to leave it there. Great to have you in the studio. Thank you so much for your time, Rowan William Short, Vinani, and of course, uh, a big thank you to Derek Ganser van Rensburg from BOE.